we have been discussing the different ways to differentiate and explored these different ways by which technology can actually help us differentiate. We learned or explored different ways on how to differentiate content. We learned or explored different ways on how we can differentiate process to be able to connect our students to content. Finally, we want to see if our students learn something. We are now after the product of their learning. And so on the last part of our module on differentiated instruction, we will explore some ways on how we can differentiate product. Product would refer to the evidence students produce to show that they have attained a level of mastery. Think outputs, think projects, think portfolios. Anything that would allow us, allow other people to see if our students actually learn something. And before I forget, it allows our students to actually verify and make a good, have a good feeling about themselves if they have actually learned something once they see their outputs. So, in order for us to address the different kinds of learners that we have, we may also want, it's also a very good idea, if we can differentiate the evidence students produce to show that they have attained a level of mastery, if we can differentiate product. We can differentiate product by offering students choices. As we have mentioned before, our students love choices. The more choices you give them, so far, the better they perform as soon as they're able to make a decision. That's where we come in as teachers. But anyway, if we offer them choices, that would allow them to choose a particular option that would be most suited for them. One such way is using the menu of options. I have an example here of a presentation. Actually, it's a task that will be performed by students. It's called, Who's for Lunch? It's actually a lesson in science on the relationships among organisms, predators, prey, etc., etc. And so the students are given this as an instruction. You are going to research the relationships between producers, consumers, and decomposers, or the organisms that get the jobs done in every biome. We could have probably introduced this concept before, but if not, at least through this task, if they perform it, they would have a clear understanding of what those terms actually mean. Producers, consumers, decomposers. Besides, it's technology. They're always free to Google. So you will be given a menu of options from which you will select projects that will demonstrate your depth of research. So what are these menus? So you will be given a list of project choices. Take note, a list of project choices. So we could assume that this is not just this. These are more than two options. You may offer an alternative project or modification to those listed, okay, in case the students would need, would want to have more, of course, subject to your approval. But the idea is they have the power to choose. They have the power to actually propose a certain project. Did you, do you recall having that when you were young? Anyway, you must complete enough projects to earn 100 points. That's the goal. That's the idea. Full credit will only be given for standing work, etc., etc. Then, of course, like in, most, like in any project, you're supposed to give them a deadline. Now, here's where the choices come in. As we have mentioned, or as mentioned in the instructions, the goal of the student is to choose projects that would give them a total of 100 points. And they would only be given full credit if they were able to accomplish each project satisfactorily. But look at the menu of options. They have many ways by which they can garner 100 points. They can either choose the first tasks with 10 points each, the one below, and then just choose a 20-point task and a 30-point task. If the students would want to have more tasks, but for those students who want challenge, and there would be some students who would want that, they would want challenge as soon as they start with a project, they would probably go and they have the choice to go for the 50-point and the 50-point project, thus enabling them to finish the project at an earlier time. And so a teacher might ask, so the students would probably have mediocre outputs. If they're in a hurry, they would just use the 50-point and then another 50-point project. But remember, 
they were given the instruction that they would only be given full credit if they accomplish the project satisfactorily. But aside from that, they are free to choose. Let's take some examples. Suppose I'm a student and I'm not really that confident yet, so I would choose that 10-point project. So the 10-point project is this. Create three help-wanted job applications for new jobs, one for each type of organism. Be sure to ask for as many traits as possible for each job type. So for example, a wanted producer. And so the students would enumerate the descriptions of the producer. If the student is able to accomplish this, okay, the student earns 10 points. But if not, no worries. The student can always choose another project to make up for this. So you might say, this might entail some time. It's okay. We give them enough time. The important thing is they have the choice on how to accomplish the project. Because anyway, you gave them the parameters. You are sure that no matter what combination of projects they choose, they would be able to understand and acquire the skills that you need them to acquire in the first place. You did not impose something very strict. In fact, you gave them a choice. And that's very empowering for students. That is something that would help different or varied students learn. So that's what we call the menu of options, wherein the students are given choices on how they can actually implement their projects. Now, one important thing or one important concept that we have learned previously is that technology affords us to come up with activities that promote authentic learning. One way is by differentiating product by giving multiple means of expression and action. In the real world, someone, a person, would have different options to do a certain thing. And so they would need to choose. One way of doing this is using the differentiated GRASPS task or GRASPS tasks. GRASPS is actually an acronym that stands for goal, what you want your students to accomplish through the project, role, your students would be playing a certain role. Now take note, if we are using the grasp task, we want our students to think of realistic roles so that what they would produce would be something that they could apply in real life. We will have an example later on. You will also have an audience because in any project, you have to think of what kind of audience you're catering to. Just like this webinar, I'm not sure if preschool students would be watching this, but anyway, you would also be mindful of the situation, why the project arose in the first place. And of course, you have to be clear on what the product would be, and you have to be clear on the different standards. Take note, there could be different products, but there is always a specific standard or a specific set of standards by which we have to evaluate the outputs of our students. Let's have this as an example. Okay. So this one is a project in ICT for high school students. The goal is to promote digital citizenship. Now, digital citizenship is actually a concept that applies for most of us who are using digital technology. Now, what is the role of the one making the project? The student would play the role of being a member of a group advocating social awareness online. Uh, this is actually a fictitious group. You can replace it with any name of a group. But to make it more realistic, that's the idea. We give a name for the group. Of course, our project should have an audience. And so the audience of this project the ones who would likely critic the project would be Facebook users. The situation is described in detail. Most if not all Filipinos have FB accounts which they access almost all day and so on and so forth. And the product is something specific as well. A social networking site page or a Facebook page. What's lacking here are the standards. It's specified in a separate section. I would just like us to have an idea on how we can actually come up with a project 
but follows the GRASPS format. But we do not give this format to our students. So after composing the words, after defining the goal, the role, audience, situation, product, and defining the standards, we actually package it, paraphrase it in such a way as if we are giving our students a specific task. Since most if not all Filipinos have FB accounts which they access almost all day, checking for updates, sharing, liking online posts, social media platforms, can be utilized to promote good values online. As members of ERAST, a group advocating social awareness online, you want to promote good digital citizenship and so, you must create a Facebook page to accomplish this goal. And these are the standards. It must be well maintained to ensure relevance of its contents and must reach a sufficient number of Facebook users within one week. Of course, you may need to provide a certain set of rubrics so that the project would be more easy to evaluate. And so there you have it. We can differentiate product by offering them choices and by giving multiple means of expression and action. So, the three ways to differentiate would be demonstrated in this lesson that I'm developing. Allow me to show you this lesson that's currently being developed before I submit this to my boss. This one is a lesson for grade 11 students on, you had it right, digital citizenship for their ICT subject. This one was made using the Genu Learning Management System. And hopefully, I would be able to demonstrate the different ways to differentiate, differentiating content, differentiating process, and differentiating product. So let's start our lesson right here. Okay. This one will try to implement a flipped classroom. This video would be part of an announcement. Okay, let's have it right there. Okay. So this would be given to the students before they actually come to class. It would be something that would introduce, it would be an announcement to introduce a forum that the students would be participating in, but they will have, they would need to watch this video first. If this video would play. Now, one thing about videos in class, Sometimes the connectivity is not that good, and so we end up with a spinning wheel somewhere in the middle. What's good about this is if we assign it, then the students will have more leeway on when and where they want to watch it. Most probably, they would have better connectivity at home, so they would be able to watch this. And so after watching this, they would now be led to this to this next part. So this would be another video. Actually, it's another video that will discuss the concept of what a digital footprint is. So again, if this were in class, it would entail some time. But since this is already available to the student, the student can wait. While he's waiting for it to load, he can maybe do something else. The student has the choice. It's all about choices for the 21st century learner. Okay. And if the student still wants to go on, he has the choice to go through this next lesson. It's a free article online that discusses netiquette, the chorus of netiquette by Virginia Shia. And then, after going through all this, take note, they are not even in the classroom yet, but you have already given them the choice, the opportunity to go about content before they actually participate in the forum which says or which requires them to think of one significant insight that they got after watching the video and reading the signed articles and they are to post this insight in the form of a hugot line as we have said students would rather be anonymous students would rather be private it might not be a good idea to ask them to give hugot lines in front of the class but if you do it in an online forum then chances are they would be competing against each other to come up with the best Hugot line that would be connected with your lesson. Take note, this is a forum, so you can still be part of it. If there would be a Hugot line that's not related to your subject matter, you can always come in and sort of guide back the discussion to where you want it to lead. After doing this, this is the only time that we would be going to the classroom. 
they have already participated in the forum, they have already watched the content, the resources that you want them to access. This is the activity that they would be doing in the classroom if they had not accessed this at home. If they had accessed it at home, better. At least they already have an idea. You're going to give them an input on the different elements of digital citizenship. After which, you will now be ready to assign them their project or their output or their product. As we have said earlier, it's important that our students have choices when it comes to making their product. So in this case, they have three options. They will have an output, they will be making an output promoting digital citizenship, but they have three choices. The first would be an infographic or poster in JPEG format, probably for one person. Some students would rather do it individually, but there are other students who would want to do it by teams. So they might consider doing option B, a 30 to 60 second infomercial. Or for those who are more musically inclined, the more kinesthetic or more artistic probably, they would rather or they would prefer composing a 30 to 60 second jingle promoting digital citizenship. You give them an option, of course, whether they do it in Tagalog or in English. Or maybe if you're in a Chinese school, they have the option to do it in Chinese. If you're in a Visayan school, maybe they have the option to do it in Hiligaynon or whatever. It's all about making them choices as long as it is related to the content that you want them to master. Now, this can be done individually or by twos or by threes. Now, after this is done, you will share your post, your, uh, your, you will share your output via social media and post the link URL as a text response to this assignment. So this is where the collaboration comes in. Aside from being group mates, even those who decided to make an infographic would end up collaborating with each other, with other people, with other classmates because they would be posting this online looking for critics on what they actually did. And so, with this output that's under construction, we are able to differentiate content, we are able to differentiate process, and we are able to differentiate product that would hopefully cater to the different kinds, variations of students that are in your classroom. Remember, the goal of any teacher is to make his or her students learn. All students can learn, not just on the same day and probably not in the same way. But the bottom line is all students can learn. And as teachers, using technology, using techniques in differentiated instruction, we can assure that all students would learn in our classroom. Thank you.